Good morning, Kenneth. How are you, my man? Good morning. I'm, I'm good, Rover. How all right. You? I'm doing all right. Now, um, first of all, uh, these these I saw this this petition that people are, are signing, and it's all against you. They want you to be disbarred in the state of California. Disbarred and dismembered. Yes. Um, yes. Now, this all stems from this video that you put out, which is anti-pitbull. It says, do not adopt pitbulls at the end. Explain why you are putting that message out there. Listen, since the 1990s, my law practice has been 100% devoted to representing people who were uh, disfigured or disabled as a result of dog attacks. And I have handled so many pitbull attacks. Uh, the numbers with regard to the pitbull, uh, the pitbull killings are, are astronomical. I mean, last year, pitbulls killed 29 out of the 39 people who were killed. In the last 12 years, they've killed about 275 Americans. So they're bad. Now, what I wanted with this, with this video was to reach people, moms and dads, who were about to go to a shelter to get a doggie for their boy or girl and who don't know what is risky and what is not risky. The point with pit bulls that I'm trying to make is that pit bulls are intolerably risky. That's the point. Not that every single one of them is going to kill somebody. That's absurd. The figures in the, that you read off from the video are the figures from last year. Eight children were killed by pit bulls, but by other dogs, only seven children were killed. Uh, now, and and people, so pit bulls, you're saying eight killed by pit bulls. Eight children were killed by pit bulls. And seven so, from all other dog breeds combined. Combined. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Can you give that's me, right. I had a woman call in, I said earlier today, I said that you were going to come on the show. Yeah. And I said that, uh, you know, pit bulls uh, make up the majority of deaths um, by dog. And this woman said, well, that's because there are more pit bulls than any other kind of dog. And she says it's the most populous breed of dog in the United States. I said, I don't think so. Okay, 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 okay. Look, they, they make up maybe 5% of dogs, okay? So you'd figure that they would be responsible for 5% of the killings, right? Yes. However, they're responsible for 75% of the killings. Now, so they, they are not, so they don't make up... They're not the most populous or most popular dog breed. This woman was completely wrong. You're telling me only 5% of dogs are pit bulls. Of course. And in fact, they're probably the most unpopular breed in the country. Why do I say that? Because pit bulls fill our animal shelters. Animal shelters are overflowing with pit bulls. Every year in the United States, one-third of the entire pit bull population is euthanized every single year. The dog is being overproduced. That's why so many people say that, the, that there need to be restrictions on pit bulls. I feel pit bulls should be banned because if you ban them, you will end a whole lot of problems, a whole lot of human suffering. It's not only human. It's not only human. In addition to killing those 29 out of the 39 people who were killed last year, Pit bulls are the number one killers of other people's pets. They kill over 90% of all the dogs, cats, horses, and farm animals that are killed by dogs every year. They, they, there's so much damage from these dogs, it's unbelievable. So response, yeah. in your practice, um, how many of the cases are pit bull cases as, a, as opposed to poodles or something? Because every dog, every dog will bite. People, they always say, well, I was attacked by a poodle when I was a kid. I go, yeah, you're yeah. still alive. <laughs> yeah, if you're I mean, attacked by a pit bull, you might not be. Um, yeah, exactly. How yeah. many of the cases in your law practice are pit bulls and how many are other breeds? Well, the, the serious cases tend to be pit bulls, you know, be, because I have, so many cases. I mean, I, I have so many cases. So the, it, it's not a question of, did you get bit by a dog? I mean, that's, that's one thing. But the question is, what dog is going to kill? What dog is going to disfigure or disable? And the cases that I've had, like, for example, all my death cases have been pit bulls, all of them. Cases where someone's face is ripped off, usually a pit bull. It can be another dog. I'm not saying no other dog bites. What I'm saying is 
what it is that the doctors say, what it is that all of the studies by the cities, by the states have come out with, which is that this breed is responsible for the worst damage. Now, another that, argument that I hear, Kenneth, is that um, that a lot of dogs and these dog bites that, that you're citing are not really pit bulls. They're other kinds of dogs or mixes of dogs, and people just think they're pit bulls. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. That, you see, this is one of the reasons why I changed my mind about what has to be done about pit bulls. For 20 years, I was against breed-specific laws. In other words, laws against pit bulls or other high-risk dogs. 20 years, I advocated against it. I gave them 20 years to do something about the dog or do something to educate people about the dangers of the dog, as pit bull organizations around the world have done in other countries. But what they do, instead of making changes in the dog or instead of educating people properly, the pit bull lovers came out with a whole lot of sheer bull. I call it the, the, the distinction between pit bull and pit truth. The, the truth of the matter is, if you mix another dog with a pit bull, you get a dangerous dog. So, yeah, some of them are mixed. They're not all purebred. Sure, but that's the problem, that once you mix it, it's like, it's like if you have a glass of water and you put some salt in it. Can you taste the salt? Yeah, you can taste the salt. Let me uh, let me go. Uh, Attorney Kenneth Phillips is on with us. He's under uh, fire from uh, pit bull lovers and pit bull organizations and whatever. They say that this guy spreads false information and that pit bulls are loving animals that wouldn't harm a hair on on someone's uh, head. Let's go to uh, Nick. Uh, you're on with uh, Ken Phillips. Good morning, Nick. Hi. How you guys doing? Hey, man. Hey, so I just wanted to comment. Um, Pitbulls are only fierce if trained that way. They don't well, just, you know, they don't just get born and all of a sudden they're just this fierce, ferocious dog that's willing to attack anything. No, wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Because listen to this. Most of the time when pit bulls kill somebody, they kill their owners, their owner's children, or their owner's parents. Most of the time when they kill something, and that's also most of the time when they do something less than killing, biting, mauling, disfiguring, most of the time. But he These says that this guy is trying to say they're, they're training them to be vicious. Is oh, that? Yeah, yeah. I trained my dog to kill my son. Yeah, right. <laughs> that, does it sound right to you? No. <laughs> uh, but uh, all right. Other people will say, well, uh, these are animals that were used. Uh, the ones that are attacking must have been abused or used in dog fighting. My pit bull pet would never turn on me or my family. I hear that argument all the time. You know that that you see this is the difference between a anecdotal evidence and statistical evidence. People will say my dog is a good dog, but then to conclude that all of them are good dogs is literally ridiculous. That's like saying. I voted for Hillary, therefore she must be president. Well, no, it's not just your vote. It's not just what you think about your dog. It's, it's what the numbers say. Uh, Candace, you're on with attorney Kenneth Phillips. Good morning, Candace. Hello. Um, first time caller, long time listener. I was calling almost to say what you had uh, just said about uh, there are many, many, many dogs who are very abused and if there are more dogs that are being abused, obviously those are going to turn on you. And if you're accounting for all the dogs in the United States, you're also including all the dogs that are dog show dogs and all these other dogs. Of course, those dogs aren't attacking anybody. They're sitting on $500 chairs with $500 collars. They're not attacking anybody. These aren't the kind of dogs that we're talking about here. If you get down to what the real numbers are, let's talk about these actual dogs that are killing people and what their lifestyles are like. Well, I don't think there are, I mean, dog show dogs probably make up one one hundredth of the, of one percent of the population of dogs in the United States. So I don't think there are a lot of dog show dogs running around. Um, Kenneth, what do you say to that? That she says, well, they're more likely to be abused. That's why they, that's why they uh, attack more. 
there's no doubt that that the pit bull is the most abused dog on the planet. It is the dog that is used in dog fighting. Uh, a lot of these dogs uh, are when when you see them in the shelter, they're scarred they they from battle scars from being used in that manner. They are the dog that set on fire the most. They are the dog that is used in bestiality the most. They, they are the dog that is tortured the most. There's no doubt about it. Pit bulls fall into, pit bulls attract the wrong kind of people. They attract a criminal element. So I, I have absolutely no quarrel with somebody saying that they are the most abused type of dog. I have no quarrel with somebody saying that when a dog attacks somebody, it's the owner's fault. I have no quarrel with that. But the problem is that there are so many of these dogs. They are in the wrong hands. The wrong people have them. They are causing so much damage. And there's no reason for them. It's have you had cases in your practice, uh, Ken, that someone had a pit bull and they didn't fight these dogs? They got this dog when it was a puppy. They weren't, you know, putting it into dog fights or whatever. Uh, the dog was a loving family dog for yeah. a while, and then yeah. and then there was a vicious attack. All the time, all the time, all the time. Now I people people never time. believe it when I when I will these these stories will come up and the, and people will call in. They go no 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 Rover that just that doesn't happen. Uh, it's the way you raise the dog, and uh, if you raise it well, like I've raised my dog, that won't happen. Well, Rover, you know you got to realize something, and that is that there are. Uh, about somewhere between four and five million pit bulls in the USA, four and five million, all right? So there's probably about how many million owners, two million, three million owners. All right, so what happens is we don't hear from the millions. We don't hear from them. We hear from a small group of, you have to call them the lunatic fringe, that don't believe what they see in the news, they don't believe what the experts say. When the hospitals and the doctors come out with the studies, they don't believe those. When the cities do the breed bans, because the cities have studied what kind of dogs are causing the problem in the city, they're against the breed bans. They just won't be convinced by anything. You can't listen to them. You just can't. Uh, let me go to Kelly. You're on with attorney Kenneth Phillips, who uh, is is – uh, I guess in the crosshairs of the pit bull loving community, because they say he spreads false information and hates pit bulls. They want his law license pulled. Uh, Kelly, go ahead. Hey, Rover. Um, I agree with him to a certain point, but it's not just pit bulls. It's any animal that you take into your own house at your own risk. It's their animal instinct. And what you just said, Rover, I was a proven fact. My animal house dog, which was a boxer shepherd, dragged me off of my sectional and ragged me around the floor like a rag doll, leaving me scarred and damaged. So it's just not pit bulls. It's any animal because it's their animal instinct. You don't know what you've they've been through or what will trigger their instinct of attack that's your risk but but yeah. i would say this kelly uh sure you never know any kind of dog your 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 poodle any could animal. attack you your your golden retriever could 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 bite you the issue mm -hmm. then the point that i've always made and people can't wrap their head around this and and maybe uh, ken would agree with me the point that i've always tried to make is if you get bit by your golden retriever your, or your two-year-old gets bit by your golden retriever, probably going to survive. If your two-year-old gets bit by the pit bull, the damage is going to be much more severe and possibly death. Was that a fair statement, Ken? Of course, Rover. See, look, here's the difference. <clears throat> these, other, these other dogs were not bred. They were not hardwired to do what the pit bull has been hardwired to do. This dog started out hundreds of years ago as the dog that would grab the bull by the face <clears throat> to help the help in the slaughter of the bull. Okay, from there the dog eventually was used for dog fighting. So, so this dog has been meticulously bred for hundreds of years for the purpose of violence. When it bites, it doesn't bite to warn you. It doesn't bite to tell you to stay away. When it bites, it grabs, it locks, and it shakes because it's trying to rip off the skin, the muscle, the tendons, the veins. It's trying to kill. 
it's been hardwired to do that. These other dogs have not been. Now, people say, and I guess it is a fact, there is no, you know, people think pit bulls have a lock jaw, but that's not true, correct? All right. Listen, in, the, in, in court, in, in one of the cases, they introduced in evidence a very interesting video. What they did was an animal control officer had the pit bull uh, latch onto a tire, and they, they pulled the tire up on a, on a chain so that the dog was hanging from it. They then shot the pit bull with a tranquilizer dart, so they tranquilized it. It passed out. It would not let go, even when it was unconscious. So you tell me, hmm. did that lock or not? I, I haven't yes, seen did. that video, but that is that is interesting. I mean, a lot of people have been bitten by dogs, and most of the time, they nip. Um, are you saying that a pit bull is more likely not to, to nip, as you say, a warning that it's... If it does, that's if it right. does bite that's you, right. it's gonna, it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's, it's going for, to, to kill or to maim or whatever. That's right. It, it's been bred to suddenly, to suddenly attack, to attack without warning. It does not, it does not exhibit the signs that other dogs exhibit. How did you get into this area of law? Well, one bite at a time. Um, I, I got into it uh, back in the early '90s. I was a, a woman was at a Christmas party, and the dog at the party, when she went to pet it, jumped up and ripped off her nose and swallowed it. So wow. that was a very, very bad case. My what kind of dog was that, just out of curiosity? Not a pit bull. It was not a pit bull. <laughs> okay. my, second, my second case was a pit bull. <laughs> I, I mean, wait a second. You're telling me that this dog, I, I hate to laugh because this is a, a horrible injury. The dog is at the party. The dog jumps up, bites the woman's nose off, and doesn't just, you know, you tell me actually eats the nose? Yeah, swallowed it. Yeah, the nose was gone. My yeah. God. That sounds that like a, a movie case. or something. Do you remember what kind of dog that was, Kenneth? No, it was a mutt. It was a mutt. Okay. It was uh, a mutt. Um, uh, my second case was a pit bull case. And the, and the pit bulls attacked the, it, it was the landlord's pit bulls. They attacked the tenant. And they, it was like they were trying to rip her leg off. And that's what got me interested. Because I said to myself, first of all, I've never heard of pit bulls. And secondly, what kind of a dog, you know, does something like this? And then what's the law? And then I realized that nobody else was specializing in this. So since the early 90s, I've done nothing but dog bite cases. I represent only the families of people killed by dogs and people who were disfigured or disabled as a result of a dog. How much, uh, if, if I own a pit bull? Uh, and my pit bull attacks someone and disfigures them? let's say, bites their nose off. How liable am I? What happens in a legal sense? What, what, what happens from that point? A guy like there, you gets the case. What, what happens to me as the owner? There may or may not be a case. It depends on what state you're in. In, in most states, there's what's called strict liability if a dog bites somebody. All right? So if you're the owner, you're automatically liable. But in a third of the states, the dog had to act like it wanted to bite somebody before, and you had to know that. So either the dog did bite somebody or acted like it. So you might not be liable in a third of the states. That's called the one bite rule, incidentally. So if, if you are liable for it, you better have insurance that covers it. Most of the time, homeowner's insurance and renter's insurance covers dog attacks most of the time. You have to ask your agent whether or not your particular policy excludes dog attacks. And some so, may... Some may exclude pit bulls, perhaps, some insurance yeah, some, policies. Some of them, yeah, some of them may exclude all animals. Some may exclude pit bulls and Rottweilers and other high-risk dogs. Yeah, you have to check that if you're a dog owner. I, 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 it's very clear. One of the responsibilities you have as a dog owner is to have the right kind of insurance. You have to have insurance for it. If you're a renter, go out and get the renter's insurance. Listen, your apartment might get broken into, you know, so it'll help you there also. Um, I, I do have to, I only have a couple more minutes with attorney Kenneth Phillips, who is one of the leading experts in dog bite law. In fact, that's his website, dogbitelaw.com. Pete in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, you're on with attorney Ken Phillips. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Ken, how you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, listen, man, I don't know how much research you know about pit bulls, but, you know, they're, they're originally called American Staffordshires, and they were bred to hire rich people to watch rich people's kids when they went out. I don't know how long ago it was, but that's what they were first bred for. People bred Thank them you. into fighting. Thank you. 
they, they weren't bred specifically to fight. Uh, no, Ken, what is, what are, no, no, Ken's no. shaking his head no. I see him on Skype. No. He's, he's waving his fingers. He's shaking no. his head. He's saying no. Yeah, yeah. Listen, listen. A guy by the name of Colby was not able to register his, his pit bull. So what he did was he developed a, a bigger pit bull. He called it the, the what you just said, the Amstaff, the American Staffordshire Terrier, and that enabled him to register it. His one of his pit bulls killed his nephew after that. Okay. Wait a second. So, so the guy about- that did this, one of his nephews was killed by that? By one of his own dogs. The nanny the dog, the guy who created the nanny dog has actually killed one of his family? Yeah, it's not a nanny dog. This is not Mary Poppins. This is the dog that kills the most number of children every year. So it's so you're Mary telling Poppins. me that pit bulls, uh, this is a myth. They were not created to babysit rich people's kids. Of course not. I can even tell you who started the myth. It was a blind guy who wrote a book back in 1915 who said that a dog, a pit bull, was a good dog with children. That's what started it. A blind guy. He had never seen a pit bull before. (laughs) Uh, Let me go to Rachel. You're on with attorney Kenneth Phillips. Good morning, Rachel. Hi, Rob. How are you? Hi. Okay. I've been listening to In and Out. I had to keep turning it off. Uh, the radio because it's been making me a little bit upset. But um, Tennis had said that he has been dealing with these cases since the early 90s. And if you're advertising that you specialize in dog attack cases, then of course that's what you're going to see. And obviously, this pit bull is a very strong breed. And I just think that Tennis has either never owned a dog or never been into a shelter and never has really seen the good side of these dogs. If you're seeing the bad side and what they could do, I've been bitten by my 22-pound beagle before. I've had a and you're still alive. Affected by her poodle. And you're That's still alive. <laughs> and I have friends that have 100-pound poodles that will love on you and kiss on you. And I just think that you've never seen the good side to these dogs. Of course, there's deaths by all kinds of dogs. I mean, if you want to think about it. People are the exact same way. Are we conditioning people to kill? No, we weren't bred to do that, are we? No, it's the same thing. All right, Ken, what do you? What's your response to her? Well, you know, and, you know, it's very nice. She sounds like a very nice lady, but she's misinformed. Uh, you know, what can I tell you? She's misinformed. These are the dogs. There have been lots of studies. Let's not talk about her experience with dogs and what she has seen in a, in a shelter. Let's talk about what the doctors have have said. The doctors, the trauma physicians, the hospitals. But they have said that this dog is the dog that caused the worst damage, the most expensive medical bills, the, the, the greatest number of hospital stays, the longest number of hospital stays, the most number of surgeries. That's this dog. OK, so I, I think it's lovely that she's had a great experience with pit bulls. And, and listen, I'm not saying every pit bull is bad. you got to understand this. I'm saying that. Pit bulls are intolerably risky. In other words, you don't get it because the risk, which is maybe this big, is of an awful outcome, gigantic outcome, disfigurement, being disabled, being killed, your kids, your parents. That's why you don't get a pit bull. In other words, it's like if you were going to get shot, uh, if you're going to keep a, a gun pointed at you in your in your own home and, and maybe you'll get shot by this gun, you'd rather have it be a BB gun than an AR-15 is what you're saying. Uh, that is what I'm saying, yes. Uh, all right. I have time for one last call here for attorney Kenneth Phillips. Let me go to Steven. You're on with Ken Phillips. Dogbitelaw.com is his website address. He's, uh, these uh, pit bull lovers want him to be disbarred. They want to take his law license. They say... He's a phony giving out bad information. Uh, go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, so um, I I think that he has the right to kind of say whatever he wants, but um, I do think that it's important that he speaks factually as he gives out this information. And just this morning, there's been a couple of things that have been, you know, incorrect, ranging just from using the term that pit bulls have been around for, quote, hundreds of years. Um, but the UKC didn't identify it until the 1900s, which would only be 100 years. Um, so false information there. The American Council. Well, let's go one at a time. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ken, what do you say about that? Pit bulls have been banned going back to the year 1400. 
Okay. They've been around a long time. So you're saying they were around before they were regis uh, recognized or, or whatever as a UKC, of, of, whatever of that course, is. Of course. Of course. So what is what a happened, pit bull to you? Excuse me? Define a pit bull for me. Listen, uh, yeah, that's the argument of you, Define you, don't a pit bull know what for a pit bull is. you don't know what a pit bull is by looking at it. Okay, well, let me just tell you, this has been litigated in court with evidence and with judges who have no, no, no stake in this one way or the other. And the courts have ruled that a person of ordinary intelligence can tell, can tell a pit bull, can recognize a pit bull. A pit bull is but a that, dog. That, I think, is the point. When you yeah. look at this and you think about it, what you're saying is that a pit bull is a visual identification for a dog. Let's yeah, look at what a statistic it, is. A statistic like a is something Can based in numbers. Tank? Can you recognize a tank? Can you tell a tank from, let's say, a, there, a, a gun? Can you? <laughs> there have also been plenty of studies where pit bulls have been, quote, identified in the news, but then they do a DNA test on them and find that there is absolutely no Staffshire Terrier or any of the umbrella dogs that form a quote pit bull for that visual identification. That's ridiculous. So you're wrong. No, no, you're completely that. wrong. I'm no, absolutely that's never not happened. wrong. Never happened. It's happened no, a lot. No, you're wrong. Staffordshire Joe Terrier Lundheim. is Lundheim. the name. Listen to me. That's the name that Colby gave to his pit bulls so he could register them. Because the no, American that's what the American Club, Kennel Club recognizes. No, no, the American Kennel Club would not would not register Colby's dog. So what he did was he he created another kind of a name for the same kind of a dog, although it was a bigger dog. He called it the American Staffordshire Terrier. And then they formed the United Kennel Club in order to register it. That was the purpose of it. So you've got everything wrong. So you're telling me, oh, Ken, no, there's I never don't. been a case where they said there, there, this was a pit bull attack. It looks like a pit bull. And then DNA is done. And, oh, it's not a pit bull. It just looked like one. That's uh, To your knowledge, Ken, that's never happened in the history of the United States. No, it, no, it has never and happened. I'd be happy to say there, is, there is DNA. Apparently, I'm morally researched. Listen, here's the thing. It's like if you salt the water, okay? It doesn't have to be filled with salt. The glass doesn't have to be filled with it. There just has to be enough to make it that kind of a dog, a dog that's been hardwired to do a certain thing. No, what like what is proven out retrieve. there, what there are studies out there, if we want to have a real conversation about dog bites and things that can prevent them, let's talk about the training methods that we're using on dogs. Because what we do is we have people like Ken coming on the radio and selling false information, which is going to make people treat these animals no, that's differently. Wrong. They're going to start to use no, a harder wrong. hand. They're going to start to use prong collars. They're going to start to use that type of training method. And it has been proven study after study that using those methods Result in more dog bites, hands down. That is fully proven. What there is so you, not. So you're here to tell us that, trained, that the dogs have been trained to be bad dogs, and you're wrong. That is not what because I said. Because they've been not, bred. That is not what they've I been said. bred that is to not be what I violent. Said. Stephen, said, has, has he said anything else that is false? What else do you take issue with before I go, Stephen? Because I got to wrap it up. I mean, you're happy to, to wrap it up. I think that's totally fine. Even just being able to define what a pit bull is, you saw how defensive he got when that happened. He's unable to do so. So he knows that the basis of all of his statistics, including his and dogbite.org, are incorrect. He knows that, and that's why he got so worked up. No, no, wrong, wrong. It's because your premises are completely incorrect. That's why. No, I'm calling out your premises for being incorrect is actually exactly what's happening. Kenneth, yeah, right. Okay. Three types of lies. You know lies I'll trade lies credentials with you anytime, buddy. Anytime. Kenneth, uh, has this been determined by the courts, uh, what a pit bull is? I mean, uh, he says that you can't define what a pit bull of is. Of course you can define it. Anybody, any, listen, anybody of ordinary intelligence can tell what a pit bull is. It is a dog with a certain blocky head, with certain muscular muscular jaws with a big blocky chest that's what a pit bull is they come in various shapes and sizes if you if you go back they were more pure in the past they have been mixed with other breeds but they are still pit bulls pit bull is a type of a dog anybody who says that there's no such thing as the breed of the dog we're talking about a type of the dog a type it is a physical type it's just like any other type of a dog. Before I let you go. No, by looking at it. Yeah. 
has anyone said to you, you said that uh, pit bulls make up uh, approximately 5% of the uh, population of, of the dogs in the United States, right. but they account for, what was it? I forget the percentage of, of attacks and, and deaths and, you know. Uh, of de- 75% of the deaths. Okay. Last year. Yeah. Um, people have made that argument when it comes to human beings as well, to race. They'll say, well, blacks make up only 10% of the population, but they account for 50% of the crime or something like that. Um, are, are, is this the same sort of, and, and various things have been said, well, this is why, and this doesn't hold true. And, you know, it's, it's the way that uh, socioeconomic conditions, uh, education conditions, blah, blah, blah. It's not the person really. It's the, it's the condition that they're brought up in. Um, there's we no. Breed, pro- Robert, Robert, we, we don't breed people. Okay. You're talking about races. Races and breeds are different. Breeds are things that are created by human beings. We, we breed some dogs over the, over the centuries to retrieve. Those are the retrievers. We, we, we've bred dogs to point. Those are the pointers. We've bred pit bulls to fight in the pit. Violent animals that attack each other and, and now have gotten to the point where they are also attacking people. There is no comparison with, with races of people. We do not genetically modify people. We're against that. All right. Attorney Ken Phillips, his website is dogbitelaw.com. I appreciate you coming on, Ken, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Kenneth Phillips.